My pet talk today is entitled, When Do You Say a Patient is Empowered? The, empower, the empowerment objective is for lay people to know how to do self-assessment on patient empowerment and to, to do continual improvement. In my first two pep talks in this module on patient empowerment, I have discussed what is patient empowerment and what are the strategies to be empowered as a patient. In this pep talk, I will answer the question, when do you say a patient is empowered? I will discuss how a patient can do self-assessment on patient empowerment and how to do continual improvement until utmost empowerment is attained. When is a patient said to be empowered? Here are the general answers. The patient is said to be empowered if he gains full control over decisions and actions affecting his personal health. The patient is said to be empowered if he knows and exercises his rights as a patient in getting the highest attainable standards of health through the quality of and safe services to be provided from the healthcare professionals and institutions that he seeks or consults. A patient is said to be empowered if he knows how to participate actively and fully with the attending healthcare professionals in the decision-making regarding his health concerns and issues. A patient is said to be empowered if he has cultivated competencies in managing his own health within his capacity and capability and within his environmental and cultural context. To, be more, to have a more quantifiable and measurable answers to the question, when is a patient is said to be empowered, I came out with a rating scale. Note, this is my own creation. This constitutes my thoughts, perceptions, opinions, and recommendations. I am open to suggestions for improvement. This is the rating scale, the R.O. Hoson rating scale on self-assessment of my level of patient empowerment consisting of 16 items. I have control over decisions and actions affecting my personal health. No control whatsoever. Minimal, moderate, great to greatest. I know my rights as a patient in deciding for my health. Don't know any right. No one to three rights at least. No four to five rights at least. No more than five rights. The rights of a patient for empowerment include the following. Quality healthcare services in terms of patient-centered, equitable, safe, effective, efficient, timely, and integrated. This also includes the quality healthcare services, particularly from a hospital setting, quality and safe healthcare in accordance with generally approved medical principles, respect and dignity without discrimination, participation in care situation decisions, informed consent and informed refusal without prejudice to continuing healthcare, Second opinion from alternate healthcare professionals of choice. Privacy and confidentiality of personal information subject to applicable laws. Availment of benefits and privileges in accordance with government regulations and to be billed accurately. 
complaint about the care and services provided without fear of reprisal. I exercise and demand my rights as a patient in deciding for my own health, regardless of the advice of my relatives and significant others. Never, sometimes, most of the time, all the time. I exercise and demand my rights as a patient in deciding for my own health, regardless of the advice of my physicians and other healthcare professionals. Never, sometimes, most of the time, all the time. I participate in the decision making on my health concerns and issues with my physicians and other healthcare professionals that I consult. Never, sometimes, most of the time, all the time. I have an intentional living written plan on how to live full and contented. Don't have one, have one but not being implemented, have one but not being consistently and regularly implemented and evaluated, have one being implemented and evaluated regularly. I have a healthy lifestyle written plan to keep myself healthy as much and as long as possible. Don't have one. Have one but not being implemented. Have one but not being consistently and regularly implemented and evaluated. Have one being implemented and evaluated regularly. I have an advanced healthcare directive, which means instructions on how to manage me when I am terminally ill. Don't have one, have one but not being implemented, have one but not being consistently and regularly implemented and evaluated, have one being implemented and evaluated regularly. I know how to do cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Don't know, have an idea, but don't know how to do it. Know how to do it, but have not practiced or done it. Have practiced, applied it. I know how to control bleeding from a wound in the body surface. Don't know, have an idea, but don't know how to do it. Know how to do it but have not practiced or done it, have practiced, applied it. I know how to do first aid for medical emergencies on myself and others. Don't know at all. Don't know how to do first aid for one or know how to do first aid for one to two medical emergencies. Know how to do first aid for three to five medical emergencies know how to do first aid for more than five medical emergencies. List of some basic medical emergencies where lay people should know how to do first aid, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, airway, airway promotion, control of bleeding from a surface wound, splinting for fractures, poisoning, fainting, high-grade fever, and others. I have attended and completed a basic course, either formal or tutorial, or in combination, on strategies in health management and restoration of health. Have attended, have not attended a basic course whatsoever. Have attended sporadically. Have attended, but not a complete course, have completed a basic course. List of some topics in the basic course in health maintenance and restoration for health for lay people, patients' rights and patient empowerment, patient management process, realities including inclusive of peculiarities, idiosyncrasies, and limitations of medicine, 
in the administration and management of healthcare, individual health management, medical emergencies, and first aid. I know the diagnostic processes in the management of a patient, don't know at all, know a little, minimum amount, know some, moderate amount, know fully. I know the treatment processes in the management of a patient, don't know at all, know a little, minimum amount, know some or moderate amount, no fully. I know the peculiarities, idiosyncrasies, and limitations of medicine and medical practice, such as inexactness and differing methods and mindsets. Don't know at all, know a little, minimum amount, know some, moderate amount, no fully. I am interested to attend and complete a patient empowerment course to be offered by R.O. Hoson. Not interested at all, but I don't need, because I don't need further improvement. Interested, but will not, but will attend sporadically. Interested, but will attend more than 50% of the course, but not the full course. Interested in the full course. After completing the rating scale, there are ranges of scores that classify different levels of patient empowerment. Here is a sample key. Okay. Note that this is still this still needs validation, and this is very subjective. Okay. Lowest level, 0 to 15 points. Low level, 16 to 32. Moderate level, 33 to 39. High level, 40 to 47 highest level, 48. What is more important is to aim for, for a score of at least two in each statement to have at least a moderate level of power in patient empowerment. The ultimate aim with progressive development is a high level, if not the highest level of patient empowerment. It must be emphasized that one does not have to feel bad or ashamed if the high level of patient empowerment is not yet there or has not been achieved, because in reality, it is not easy. What is more important is to know one's gap and or deficiencies after the self-assessment, then make a plan and a resolve to fill the gaps and to go to a higher level of patient empowerment. And also goes without saying, a self-assessment should be repeated after the first at, at plan intervals, say six months to one year, until one has achieved a high level, if not the highest level of patient empowerment. I have this online form, okay, the internet. self-assessment of my level of patient empowerment. So this ends my talk entitled, When Do You Say a Patient is Empowered? I hope I have empowered you to know how to do self-assessment on patient empowerment and to do continual improvement. Mabuhay kayong lahat.